Welcome to one of our weirdest exercises to date. This exercise, if you haven't already noticed, is called Lemon Cow. What it's going to teach you how to do is add an image to another image and then adjust it so that the lighting fits. In that sense, it's going to be a little bit similar to our last exercise, which was the background replacement. But now instead of deleting the background, we are just adding a new picture in, keeping everything the same, but adding things like shadow and making the image blend in. So the first image that we want to open and work with is the field. I'm going to go to File, Open. You can also just go to Open from Computer right there. I hopped ahead and found my file. It's right here. It's called field.jpg. I'm going to go ahead and open it. And the image is going to look like this. It's a little bit of a dark field. We can see the sun is probably at about 12 o'clock, meaning it's directly overhead. And it's important to know that for any other images you want to blend seamlessly like this. So we just want to keep in mind, sun is at 12 o'clock, meaning it's hitting directly down. After we've opened this, we are going to add the cow file into it. To do that, I'm going to go to File, Open and Place. And then again, just locate that file, which should be called cow.png. I want you to take note of something. Anytime a file is a PNG, it has the ability to have a transparent background. Not all PNGs have transparent backgrounds. In this case, this one does. And in the next exercise, I will teach you how to find PNGs with an actually transparent background. Uh, sometimes the images people upload look like they might have a transparent background, but actually don't. Another, by the way, PNG actually stands for Portable Network Graphic. That means PNGs aren't really good for printing. If you find a PNG and you really like it, it's going to be more suitable for digital devices like a phone or a computer or anything with a screen, but it's not really suitable for printing, even though it can be printed. So aside from my tangent, we're just going to go ahead and click open and it's going to place this image of the cow. And we do have a bounding box around it, meaning we have this little transform box that opens up anytime we place an image. So if we want to make it bigger or smaller, we can do that. From the last image, I taught you guys, when you're pulling on these corners, make sure you're holding shift as you do. This is what happens if I pull it and I'm not holding shift. It can distort the image and make it look not proportional to what it's supposed to be, which, I mean, you can do for fun, but for our purposes, you want to make sure you're holding shift so that you get a nice, perfect ratio. Then you want to just choose the ideal size that you want the cow to be on your field. I'll choose about that size and I'll just go ahead and move him. When you are moving the image, by the way, just make sure that you're not clicking on this center square right there. Make sure you're clicking anywhere inside the image around that little square. So I think I'll place him right here. Then when you're done with your transformation, you can either press enter on your keyboard or you can just click this check mark to finish the transform. I want to note that I chose this image really specifically for this field because the lighting on the cow matches the lighting in the image. Like I mentioned before, in the field image, it looks like the sun is directly overhead, so it's probably about 12 p.m. And in the picture of the cow, you can tell that the shadows are underneath the cow, like directly underneath it. So you know that the sun is directly on top at the time this picture was taken. So little things like that, if you are interested in getting really good at Photoshop, small things like that are really important to keep in mind so that the images blend seamlessly. Now that we've placed our cow, sized her and moved her to wherever we want, the next thing that we are going to do is cut the cow in half. This sounds super weird, but it will be okay once it's done. You'll kind of see the purpose of the project. I mentioned 
in our last video that when there's this little tiny rectangle on the thumbnail of the layer, just like there is for the cow, that means it's what's called a smart object. Smart objects directly link to a file on your computer. So if you make it smaller and then larger afterwards because you changed your mind, it's not going to affect the original image. The same goes for if you erase or delete a part of this image, you can always go back to it and it's not going to be a permanent change that you make to the file. Working with smart objects isn't necessary in Photoshop, especially when you're kind of a newbie, but it is the smarter way of working in Photoshop because you can always delete the changes you made and they're not going to be permanent. So because this is a smart object, again, we're not making any permanent changes to it. The first thing that we want to do is use a new kind of selection tool. It's really similar to the lasso tool and the auto selection tool, except it's in the form of a shape. It is called the elliptical marquee tool in Photoshop. I think in Photopea it's just called the ellipse select tool, which kind of is an easier name too. If you don't see it immediately in your toolbar, it is under the move tool. It's the second tool in the toolbar. And you can click and hold it to access it. You might by default be on the rectangle select tool, so you just have to go down to ellipse select. What this does is it makes selections in oval shapes. It can also make selections in circles if you hold shift. But for our purpose, we want to just make an oval selection on this cow and cut it out. So I'm going to start from the very top center of the cow. I'm even going to go into the sky a little bit. And with this tool, I'm just going to click and drag down like so. So notice I left a little bit of space on the bottom and a little bit of space on the top. If this isn't placed exactly where you want it to be, you can always move the circle as well just by clicking and dragging inside of it. Once you're happy with the position of the oval, we're going to go ahead and now add the whole right side of this cow to our selection. To do this, we are going to go to the good old fashioned lasso tool which is the third tool down in the toolbar. And since we're adding to our selection, we should be holding the shift key while we do this. I'm gonna hold shift, and I'm going to click and drag from the inside of my ellipse all the way out. You wanna make sure you are getting the whole cow and you're not cutting anything off like a part of the ear. And I'm just clicking and dragging around it. And once I reach that oval again, I'm just going to cut straight through the middle and end my selection where I started. And remember this whole time I'm holding shift, then I will let go. We now have the entire right side of the cow selected. Normally if you're working in Photoshop and you're pretty new to it, at this point you would probably edit cut, but we are not going to do that. This is a smart object, so you actually can't do that to a smart object. You can't make any permanent changes like cutting or erasing. But we are going to make a temporary change by adding what's called a layer mask. A layer mask makes it so you can make changes to a layer, and then if you change your mind later on, you can just delete it, and the layer will go back to normal. To add a layer mask after we've finished making our selection, what we are going to do is go to the layer panel and all the way at the very bottom there is this icon that is a rectangle with a circle inside of it and it says add raster mask when I hover over it. First make sure that you are on the cow layer not the background layer and then go ahead and click the add raster mask. At this point you will notice that the left side of the cow has disappeared, which tells you if we're looking at this mask, which you can see was added to the layer, it's this black rectangle, anything white in this little thumbnail means that it's showing in the actual image. So this right side of the cow is basically what's shown as white in this little mask. Anything black 
has disappeared or has been erased, essentially. Now, the really easy way to get the left side of the cow back as a separate layer is to duplicate this layer. To do that, we are going to right click on it and then go to duplicate layer. And it will make an exact copy of that layer with the mask applied. I'm gonna take this moment to rename my layers. I'm gonna call this one cow right. And I'm gonna call this one cow left. The very easy and simple way to reverse this mask so that the left side of the cow is showing is to first make sure that you are clicked on this mask, not clicked on the layer, but on the mask itself, which is this black rectangle. And we are going to invert this image. Inverting an image means you take anything black and you turn it white and you take anything white and turn it black. It inverts all colors. To find that invert option, we are gonna go to image, adjustments, and then go down a little bit until you find invert. The shortcut for that is control I. And voila, you will see that the left side of the cow has reappeared. You'll also notice that this mask has inverted color. So like I said before, anything black here has turned white and anything white has turned black. Now that you've separated the cow into two different sides, you can just move this left side and the right side, and you will see that you have successfully cut the image into two separate layers. At this moment, once you have cut the cow, please make sure to save. You can first rename this file by double clicking this little tab up here. And we are gonna call it again, last name underscore first name underscore lemon cow, which is the project title. So I would type in Manasakanian Nare Lemon Cow, and then press OK. I've renamed it, then I'm gonna go ahead and save it just to make sure that if my computer shuts down or the power goes out, I'm not gonna lose my progress. So I'll do that by just going to File, Save as PSD. That's all for part one of the video. In the next one, I'm gonna show you guys how to put in the image of the lemon.